It's fair to say that the Bloodhound Land Speed Project has seen its share of ups and downs. Launched in 2008 as Bloodhound SSC, it was hoped that the car would raise the land speed record to over a thousand miles per hour, with current record holder Andy Green behind the wheel and former record breaker Richard Noble overseeing the programme. In addition to its high speed aspirations, the project formed the basis of an education programme to inspire students in STEM subjects science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Despite successful runs at over 200 miles per hour in 2017, a combination of political and economic factors led to the program entering financial administration. The project's assets were bought by Yorkshire entrepreneur Ian Warhurst shortly before the car was due to be scrapped. Rebranded as Bloodhound LSR, the car was successfully tested at 628 miles per hour at Hackskeen Pan in South Africa during November 2019, driven by Andy Green. The COVID pandemic prevented any further running the following year, and the project was subsequently put on hold. The car itself is currently on display in Coventry Transport Museum. On November the 7th, 2023, a surprise announcement from Bloodhound LSR declared that they were seeking a driver who could bring the necessary skills, ambition, and funding to the project, and that a week-long tour with a full-scale exhibition model of the car would begin immediately. I visited the roadshow on a windy day at Silverstone, home of the British Grand Prix, to talk to the team about their plans. I'm Stuart Edmondson. I'm currently the CEO of the Bloodhound Project, um, but I joined the project in 2016 as one of the engineers, actually responsible for running the car um, and running it in Newquay and then running out in South Africa up to the 628 miles per hour during testing. But now, today, yeah, I am now a responsible project and hopefully we're going to go back out to the desert um, and set a new land speed record. I do need someone with some relevant experience, but it, it might be wider than you think. Um, it could be a car driver, could be a motorcyclist. I mean, it could be a, a pilot, um, but they've got to demonstrate they've got experience in that field. And more importantly, they've understand how to prepare and train for what they do, because that's what they're going to need to do for driving Bloodhound. And then ultimately actually doing it, i.e. the experience of that high pressure environment uh, whilst whilst being fully disciplined at what you're doing. I need someone with huge discipline. Um, but that, that's it in a nutshell. Uh, I think that in very simple terms, who I'm looking for. Andy has been a crucial part of the team ever since it was formed, um, and not just as a driver. So he is a critical member of the team. And going forward, he's gonna remain part of the team. He will obviously be hugely valuable in terms of mentoring and advising and training the new driver but also he will be playing a huge part in the development that we need to do before we go back out and set the land speed record well the race to greatness campaign for me is all about the commercial side of the project so it's not really for me to comment on a driver's uh, capability behind the wheel that's Stu and the engineering team but for the commercial team, we're looking for somebody who either has the money or that can bring the money into the team. So that's really what we're looking for in this campaign. Well, obviously, it's day two um, of the roadshow. It's third day since the announcement. It would be very unprofessional, unfair of us to say uh, who's made any contact or any calls. But all I can confirm is that there have been some interesting uh, phone calls and some dialogue going on. So this is exactly why we wanted to do this campaign. The timescale we're looking at for the project now is not just engineering. There are a few bits and pieces that have to be done uh, on the engineering side of the car and the car preparation side for these higher speeds. From a driver perspective, we now have uh, the selection and the training process that will follow that and then into um, the high-speed testing, which will hopefully culminate in another land speed record. But we're realistically looking at a two or three year program for that, so 2025, 2026. We are going to run this car, the EJ200 Rolls-Royce jet engine on uh, sustainable aviation fuel. So this could very well be very valuable to that process. It could be actually the first jet engine to run on 100% sustainable aviation fuel. And when it goes supersonic, it could be the first jet engine to run on 100% sustainable fuel supersonic, which is obviously then aligns with the rest of uh, 
the project's intention to be net zero in running the car. And also that can extend to the, uh, uh, to the camp and also to the support vehicles from there as well. We want to do this as responsibly as possible. So the car's in pretty good shape. So when it came back from, uh, when it came back from high speed testing, the car was taken apart and was, was checked over thoroughly. Um, when COVID struck, of course, we had to hibernate the project because it's not the sort of project that you can keep going when, when the world was in the state it was in at that particular time. Coventry Museum was always a place where there was a third space there that we could, we could park the car if we wanted to. And so we took that opportunity to, to keep it in safekeeping. You asked me about the NAMO rocket, the uh, second stage rocket, and that, that has to be fully integrated into the car. So I would say that's the biggest engineering uh, part of the project that has to happen. So it's a case of marrying up the two, um, the two propulsion systems together, shall we say. The aim in uh, South Africa in 2025-26 uh, is to get a new uh, outright world land speed record I think that uh, the general consensus is that if there's an eight in front of that, people would be very happy with that. And that is a very sensible step. Yes, the car was originally designed to do a thousand miles an hour, um, and that may still be possible, but the next step has to be uh, somewhere in the eights to actually prove that the rocket and the jet engine work together at those super high supersonic speeds. Somebody out there could be the next land speed record holder. I'm hoping and I'm pretty confident that this will do the trick.